Welcome to Chopped Greens. As always, I am your host, Philip Amrine, sitting alongside... Gary Batcher. Hello. I was I was going to maybe do like a voice there because I've been doing them all day, but I was like, eh, I don't want to confuse people. I'll just be me. Just be you, Gary. That yes. is really the motto in life that you should hold and hold to. And, and in that's this, lightning and it's, the and it's the motto <laughs> in this sh- oh, man. story. So look at that. Look at you. Everyone's Excellent. a good segue. Every week they get better and better. Yes, yes. So Cars 3 this week was the movie of yeah. choice topic. I don't know what exactly the right word yeah. there is, but it was the movie, movie of the week. Movie of the week. Fantastic. And... For a movie such as this, I mean, for one, it, it's a it's a standout film just in the sense of the past couple weeks. I can't remember. I think for, let's say, five weeks at least, we've done straight up films. So this is the first kids film that we've done ever. The outside first of Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire is one I can true. think of off the top of my head. This is the first release we've done that's like yes, a children's kid, movie. S- yes, pure, you know. pure pure children's movie. And m- might I say that in the previews. They have, I have a very mixed feeling on, I can't remember, it was a, it was, I'm trying to look it up now, but it was a Hispanic Pixar film that's coming out about the Day of the Dead. It's oh yeah, it's called Coco, I think. Yeah, Coco It, it looks or something. cool. Yeah, no. I'm down to that, see that. The, the conflict is not whether or not wanting to actually see that film, because yeah. I do. What holds me back is the fact that there's a freaking Frozen mini episode preceding that, that coming out in theaters in November yeah they highlighted it and in order to somewhat boost up this Wait, this are, are you this telling movie me that, are you telling me that you don't like frozen is that what you're saying right now yes that is exactly oh my god how can you not like frozen it's legendary I you, love frozen I saw I saw this movie cars 3 with my girlfriend and you can yeah you can validate it with her but as soon as I saw the beginning and opening moments of that frozen mini cartoon that they're planning on doing I out Outwardly shouted, "No!" Why I, I couldn't? I couldn't hold it in, Gary. You, you have ten seconds or less to tell me why you don't like Frozen. Go. For one, the or I'll just go. Okay, so for ten seconds or less, the ending is completely material, immaterial. There's just no reason as to why it's wholly thrown together, and it's just a a play of of mashupness that does not deserve the status. All in all, does that make two sense? words? Two words. Bad Adina, ending. Adina Menzel. Oh, let's agree on that. Great songs. Oh. Aaron Dell. That's actually one word, but yeah. you know Adele what? Hazim, you the mean? the story is a little a little rickety, but it's a great a time. Wickedly talented. Oh. Adele Hazim. <laughs> But I I love Frozen. I I will stick to my guns. I'll I'll go I'll go and watch Gazen. See, this is something that we get to continuously learn about each other. I didn't even know you liked that movie. I love Frozen. And now my I entire was, opinion of you it, just it, it came Whoa. out when I was probably sixteen, and I was like singing it in high school. I was running through the halls of North Point, and saying, you want to build a snowman. It didn't come out when you were 16. 16 or 17. Maybe, maybe like closer to my senior year. I was 17 or 18 when that movie came out. I mean, what was it? 2012? 2013? Looking it up right now. Yeah, let's get it up. One the, it's, it's a little dated now. It's been out for a few years. It came out in 2013. 2013. I was 17. There you go. I was, I was 17. Act your age, Gary. <laughs> okay, so I didn't want to talk about Frozen. We've so talked I, about Frozen for like a, a sizable portion of this. I know that we gave it way too much run time for a Cars Three episode. So let's go. Cars Three kind of uh, returns back. Have did you see Cars Two? Yeah, I've actually. I realized when I sat down, I was like, I have seen Cars One and Two like at least three times each. Really, I've Cars One a lot of times because of it's, I, it's on, on road classic. trips. Yeah, when I when I was younger, we'd go on road trips. We had like a little DVD player in my car. And Cars 3, or Cars was one of the movies that was in there. And Cars 2, where they go to, like, like around the world racing, like, Formula 1 cars, I've seen that, like, multiple times. I was like, wow, I've seen these movies a lot. Like, I remember them pretty clearly, and I was like, wow. Now yeah. I'm seeing Cars 3. I, I mean, this this has spanned 11 years <laughs> since Cars came out. Like, it's... I, I didn't realize how big it was because it's still like a huge franchise. I just, you know, because it's not the best stuff Pixar's ever put out. Kind of forget about it. But I'm like, oh, Cars is a thing. Well, the beauty of, of, of animation, really, is that you can have a, unageable characters. That, that's, yeah. I mean, Owen Wilson, outside of a, 
a Michael Douglas throat cancer situation where his voice does indeed change because he's had to have surgery on it. Owen Wilson's voice is not going to change. Yeah. So theoretically, you have control, the utmost control of aging somebody as much and as little as you like. Outside of, yeah. again, maybe Monsters University, if they go to a baby Mike Wazowski, yeah. and you can then age back up to Billy Crystal's voice. That That voice does not really age. So... In a way, you're blessed with this opportunity to create sequels upon sequels and create a film franchise within yeah. itself, within that um, Pixar universe, mm-hmm. uh, and really create a whole embodiment of a story and really go everywhere. But the the biggest boon to me here is that Cars 3 does indeed return to form in that it goes back to the what made it great in the original film, mm-hmm. an, an original uh, creative idea in the original Cars as opposed to the... Um, straight to DVD, straight to DVD spy sequel Cars two that we got that was just all yeah major, I mean you, you, you have Cars and then you have you know Cars two planes and planes fire and rescue and that's no nah, planes fire and rescue no. was just a bad idea yeah I think it was so, they had a sequel even to that and that was just a they had a idea. sequel to that I'm pretty sure probably direct to DVD let's hope oh hopefully but Cars two even in and of itself even though it had Michael Kine. And Michael and it was just revolving around Mater, which was not what the original story was. Yeah. I mean, and Mater's cool, and it's cool to, like, you know, take different perspectives and give characters subplots, but that was just kind of overblown and not the best idea. No, it was yeah. not. And it, it's a mistake most movie, a lot of franchises, I should say, yeah. um, make, is that either for, for whatever reason the main character they just want to get rid of or... or watered down or yeah. not make as big of a focal point in the second film of a, of a franchise and so they bring that comic relief character or the fan favorite if it were, as it were yeah. to the forefront of the film and it just doesn't hold as much substance because then you're getting most of that comic relief as no longer relief as, as the that's, prominent that's the brunt feature of the, of whole the thing, film yeah. yes I mean, I I think Mater is funny because every five minutes he's got like a little funny southern colloquialism to say, and that's what Mater is. I don't, you don't build a movie around Mister Mater. You you know you do it around Lightning McQueen because the first Cars film was was about you know him humbling himself and becoming less of a of a cocky racer and more of a, you know a wait. Well, you're shaking your head no at me right now. I don't oh, know, I don't know I, what that no, means. I just I found out that there was indeed a Planes, oh, which was the movie, and yes. Planes, Fire, Fire and Rescue. And rescue. Yes, so yes, there yes, were yes. indeed two Planes franchise films. Yes, really sad. Yes. Terrible terrible waste of a few hundred million dollars. But back to your point. Yeah, so yeah, the, the first Cars, uh, uh, Lightning had a good arc, and the f- Cars isn't... It's good. It's not great where, like, Nemo and, and Up and Toy Story are, like, great. Cars is just good, and it's fun. And the second film didn't have that, that compelling arc at all. And this one, I felt, brought it back to where they opened up some new stories, some relatable stuff for maybe some some older folks who were going to take their kids to see the movies. And, and Lightning had a good arc in this movie. I actually enjoyed that part of yes, it. Yes, they brought back that intense uh, character development. Yeah. I wouldn't say that there's a lot of... The story in all three franchises, or excuse me, all three um, episodes or, yeah. or whatever. Films. Yeah. Uh, films, all three films, is really straightforward. There's not too much twist and surprise. There's not a lot of... It's a pretty by-the-numbers uh, sports or somewhat hero a, story. Somewhat of a twist at the end, but really but nothing not, too out of, the, yeah. out of the ordinary. Yeah. Nothing that really jars you and surprises you. If you go back and look at it again, you realize that... You're like, oh, yeah, we saw that coming. Yeah, but, that, that was pretty easy to pick up. Um, but they go back to that character development aspect mm-hmm. within this film, Cars 3, and uh, if you're going to go see this film, that's really an element to look forward to. Yeah. Is that not, the, not only do they reintroduce the old characters that they've had there in uh, Radiator Springs. They yep. bring them all back and they all got serviceable parts and, and relatable parts that we liked and they were, yeah. they're still in their minor, minor roles. But they introduced new ones and new, new cast members yep. and not a, uh, not a lot of villains in this one. Only, only really one and even then... Jackson Storm. Jackson Storm. Even at that point, the villain is the fact that Lightning is aging and that yes. he's getting passed up by younger racers. That, the, the antagonist is that idea and that feeling. Yes. You know? And it's, just, it's not him against another car. Like it was, it was, in the first movie, it was like him and Chick. Essentially, you know? yeah. But, but now it's Lightning is just racing against himself. 
Correct. Which is relatable and a cool, cool thing. I thought that was and I I you can tell this movie is geared for children. Like it's rated G and kids would really enjoy it. But you know, as an adult, you want to go see a kids movie that like at least you can watch. And I was like, that's a pretty compelling element to the movie. I can enjoy that. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of past Pixar films that really have a story that is so unique and is so yeah. um, above kid it's it's more than kid friendly it's it's something not like Rugrats it's just a great movie just a great movie you regardless know, that's that that's I mean up I mean everyone was bawling it was nominated for like for best picture that was so it's such an excellent movie same thing with like Toy Story whereas Cars was never there I still enjoy watching it. Yes, and now, yeah. to be completely frank and honest, part of that is because of Owen Wilson for me. Owen Wilson is Whoa. my... No, Owen Wilson is my guilty pleasure actor, where yeah. he's kind of like the Paul Rudd of, of his generation, where you don't go to an Owen Wilson movie expecting to be wowed by his performance. You go to see Owen Wilson. Wow, man, that's great. Yeah, Owen Wilson. Wow, you're wide. Speed. I am sp- <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I mean, <laughs> Owen Wilson is always going to be Owen Wilson. And yeah. so that's fine. We go down the line. Larry the Cable Guy returns his mater. Uh, Bonnie Hunt is in here. Cheech, uh, Cheech Marin is Ramon. The new one, of course, Jackson Storm, as you mentioned, is Army Hammer. I, I, I was trying to figure that out. I was like, is this Army Hammer? Huh. At first, I thought it was either him or Blake Jenner. I was like, oh, it's Army Hammer. That's cool. Cristela Alonso is Cruz Ramirez. And Paul Newman who is deceased, but makes a they, bunch of flat flashbacks. I don't know if they used old recordings or if they somehow they recreated his voice for his little voiceover no, parts. No, most of it I remembered from the original movie. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so a lot of that must have been... He probably recorded a lot track. of extra dialogue, too, that yeah. they could go back and use, you know. Kerry Washington is Natalie Certain. They um, got Nathan Fillion in there. I heard his voice. I was like, ooh, Nathan Fillion, Captain yeah. Malcolm Reynolds. What are you doing around here? Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of good uh, people in here. Chris Cooper, uh, Paul Dooley. Trying to see any last last members. No, that's that's probably yeah. oh, Daryl Waltrip is uh, Daryl Cartrip. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so let's and and just quickly diving into the movie because it's always hard with these films of uh, trying to give a review on them without giving too much away. But eventually, I'm going to stop saying it. But the attention to detail and the graphics are just astounding. Even yeah. in, even in a Cars movie, just just the way that the blades of grass have like a little breeze just going on behind them while the main characters are talking. The way yeah. that the scenery is just set. I was I found myself noticing that too. Like like if your eyes wander to any part of the screen, you're like, holy cow! Like this, they I, and, create a completely believable and beautiful. Yeah, set, I mean, and, and, and if you, if you pull yourself out, you're like, we're watching. Talking automobiles give a compelling story, and it's very entertaining. I'm like, the fact that they can do that and make automobiles be believably human and then put all that detail in the world, I still think is incredible, like, 11 years later. Now, of course, there is a somewhat suspension of disbelief. It, it kind of marries yeah. that, that line of reality versus a reality where cars exist. So. Yeah. In, in, and it's kind of always, it bothered me throughout the whole movie, but it's it's one of those I probably have to let go. Uh, but the question of the the question of whether or not a car can become a racer is is introduced into this movie. Yeah. And my question then becomes: if you're if you're uh, a tow truck like Mater, if you're uh, an ATV, what have you? Yeah, you're never going to be a racer, so there's a yeah. it's a lot more <laughs> segregated. I, yeah, I I, I, I I found myself thinking that too. You know, and Lightning's trainer um, was born. She was like a Lamborghini or something, and I was like, so wait, so how does this work? Because and also the whole thing is that Lightning is getting old, and I'm like, why don't they just give him new parts? Or he doesn't look old. How are He's just old, and I, I was like, "All right, he's he's been racing for a long time, and he's old, and he's slow now because he's an outdated model." Yeah, and I'm like, "Well, then why don't they just like transfer his consciousness to a new?" I don't know how that works in car world, but you know, there are a lot of <laughs> a lot of surprising ethical theological questions that yeah. come up when you're trying to create uh, and wrap your mind around the rules of this reality. So yeah, uh, but. 
This was this wasn't that kind of movie where everything's going to be answered and it's it, rated G. You just you just let go and you're like, all right, I'm here with my two year old. I'm just gonna enjoy it. It had a really profound. Speaking of the director who died last week, a real profound Rocky feel to it. The original Rocky movie, Rocky yeah. uh, Baboa, that tale of redemption and. Um, just coming back, beating I, impossible odds of aging out. No matter how cheesy it is, I can always get behind, like, an underdog story. You know? <laughs> Even in Cars 3, I'm like, come on, Lightning! You can do it! I, I, I found myself getting really excited and really into it. I was like, mm-hmm. you gotta beat Jackson Storm. I freaking hate Jackson Storm. <laughs> you know? And and uh, they created a nice villain in here where it's, it's just, uh, in Jackson Storm... Where it's just cockiness, it's pure yeah. arrogance, and he's good. He's he's the best, and he knows he's the best. And it's and it's modern, is what it, it felt like. I, I don't know if this movie will age gracefully with time, if, but yeah. it, for the for right now in this time, and, and especially if you love sports, actually. If, you know what? I, I was thinking in the movie. I was like, Lightning is 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 LeBron, and Jackson Storm is the Warriors. Eh, like it's probably more, that's that's what it is, man. Probably more Lightning is like Kobe. And Kobe and late in his career, Jackson and is. Jackson is like LeBron. Yeah, something like, something like that. Because Kobe ago. refused to integrate into the new world. True. Still go out his way. So true. For those of you who enjoy sports and listen to both Good podcasts, analogy. there we go. Uh, one thing I did not like about this film, and there's a there's a a crazy eight race in here. That yeah, th- that th- th- they take a good twenty minutes just at Thunder Hollow doing their Thunder Hollow. It's, it's like a demolition derby, right? You know? And without giving too much away, my main problem with that specific portion is that they go around and around. And for me, an animated feature allows you a lot of freedom to do what you want that you cannot with you, you know, a regular with, film with live action that, that's the beauty of animation yeah. that's the beauty of it really I mean as I'm watching I last night as a matter of fact I watched Ratatouille I love Ratatouille love Ratatouille and, and it's actually in my gimme five but Ratatouille and I noticed it just because I'm now watching things more with a critical eye instead of just sitting back and enjoying them but yeah. watching Ratatouille there's a moment where they they do a camera technique within the animation of of pulling the camera or uh, pulling the camera back and sliding the focus forward, so that way you're zooming in. But it's creating yeah, it's that going. moment of where you're really crunching in on what what the action is, but it's still a direct camera movement that's been perceptualized for film. Yeah. What we lose there in cars, at least in this demolition aspect, is there's a lot of cutscenes for an animated yeah. film. It's just there. It's it's that part is animated or it's it's edited kind of like those DC films where yeah. it's just like just cut going everywhere after. and it's just trying to like blow us away with like the spectacle that's going on. And I'm like, all right, I'm kind of tired of this. We don't need this scene right now. But they could have cut that scene out completely, and it really wouldn't have changed. It I mean, f- anything. It did feel like a lot of filler. But yeah. On top of it. I was just more confused, and I feel like they could have conveyed the message and what was going on in that area uh, better had they taken a different perspective or shown it from a different angle or some other aspect. But yeah. As it, it's animation. You don't have to do crazy cuts to make your action good because you can animate whatever you want. You can animate whatever you, you want. Know, the you stuntmen know? will never get hurt. In yeah. That. <laughs> you don't have to like fake show them getting hit. Just explode something. It's animation. Also... Going along the lines of what cars can and cannot do, how do they move trophies? Yeah, do, do they just, just nudge them? How, even how do they if you saw in Cars 1 where there's the piston cup, right? And that's the big attainable item. Yeah. He did we, what in his cup? Yeah, he did what. <laughs> uh, but the, the cup constantly moves around and everybody has a cup. How, how do they move that? And that just kept coming up and up and up for me to where I didn't understand... How items like that existed, and it just didn't work for me. But how are they made? Who? How is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there are a lot of good themes within this film, though. I, I liked a lot of the ideas introduced. Um, that that it did have a sense of realism. That I felt the commercials that I saw leading up to Cars Three were giving it a more dramatic feel. Mm-hmm. I know in that first that first commercial that was released for Cars Three. Mm-hmm. What it what it conveyed the message that was supposed to be perceived, I thought, yeah. was that it was a much darker film. That there's there's a lot less just straight up racing in this movie. A mm-hmm. lot of it is about 
you know, Lightning's journey and all that mm-hmm. stuff, a lot of it is a lot slower. It's a longer film. But even within yeah. that first commercial, it's slowly of the car turning over and you see like these nuts and bolts and they're just crystal clear because it's Pixar animation. But yeah. everything's slowly turning and we slowly see Lightning McQueen come into view as being the car that's crashing. Yeah. And, and the way that it's there's a background noise uh, or a narration rather yeah. uh, alludes to the fact that it's going to be this dramatic film and it's going to be dark and it's going to have a more realistic tone and it's going to be just a bunch of, of these things that it just wasn't. That it was just a lighthearted good family film yeah and i don't know if there was a discrepancy as to when the f- first commercials came out to how they wanted to per- have it be perceived or what yeah. have you but it just was not what i was thinking of really i mean it was as, probably as you know, quote unquote dark as you can make a you know rated g film i mean in, in the beginning i mean and obviously they're uh human humanistic I'm trying to think of of the word a- anthro whatever uh, something An- anthropology. Uh, yes, they're those type of cars, and so it really doesn't like hit home when they crash as much as you know w- when you see like a, a real person crash in a racing movie. So I and it's like you said, it is family friendly. It's more dramatic than any of the previous films, though. And there were a lot of, of moments cars, of cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, of of any of the cars movies. And there were a few moments like they started talking about how, how the new technology is really elevating all of, all the younger athletes and all the older guys um, can't really keep up. That's a theme that I, obviously I think was – that isn't going to resonate with kids at all. But older people seeing the movie might be like, oh, yeah, you know, I totally feel that. Yeah. So I actually thought um, – I mean th- the first one's the best. But this one, adding those in made it – watchable and you know a little bit more dramatic than than i had expected actually i was like oh this film has a very dramatic tone and uh, some feminist tones in there too especially towards the end with um i'm not going to spoil anything but a nice little surprise in there passing of the torch did you like that i say i did like that did because you enjoy the ending yeah it, it was actually huh. um a, a <laughs> mature ending i thought it, it left room i don't think that they're going to make any more I hope not, actually. I thought it was a good way to end it um, and well, a great well, way to, to open fair, it up. to be fair, again, when we saw Rocky Balboa, we were promised that that was going to be the last Rocky, and then Creed came out. Did you see Creed? I loved Creed. And I, I loved Creed, too, and yeah. I thought it was going to be gosh darn awful. Are you serious? <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, this is before it came out. Yeah. I was and thinking, I'm here thinking, I could, oh, yeah, my I, goodness. I didn't see it until after it came out, so I don't really know what I would have thought. Right, yeah. and so I was thinking, oh, my goodness, another Rocky movie. I go and see it, and I'm blown away. Yeah, and really, it's probably the best one besides the first one. Oh, no, that, no doubt. It's because an awesome movie. Even that's v- validified by Sylvester Stallone's not Oscar nomination yeah. by it. So, anyways... But the point is, is is beyond whether or not there will be another one, and only time will tell. And really, box office sales, because if if there's yeah. enough money and uh, I mean, I'm demand. sure that it's going to make a stupid amount of money. And Disney, I mean, I, I went to Disneyland last year. They have Cars Land. They have a of land course, for cars. Like Disney loves cars and kids. I didn't realize because I'm always like, well, oh, it's, it's, it's a recognizable flashy. brand by now. It, it is. I mean, I. Th- I, I, I didn't realize it, but I have, like, a, like going through my stuff, I've been mm-hmm. doing this challenge where I'm, like, getting rid of things every day. I've gotten rid of, like, two Cars toys. I'm like, where did I even have it? Like, <laughs> why, why do I have Cars stuff? Well, for opening weekend, it did make uh, $53.7 million. <laughs> I believe that's domestically. What was its budget? What was its what, budget? What was a production budget for Cars 3? I will Because animation you. budgets are always less than the live action budgets, so... Well, it it was approximately a hundred and seventy five million. No. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, oh, but God. if you think about it, it'll probably that's just domestically that fifty seven. So I'm sure it'll it'll make it back oh, eventually. Yeah. Um. So you you didn't like the ending to this movie? I I I don't know that it's what I hmm. It was a good surprise, and, yeah. and just the simple fact that it was a surprise. Uh, how satisfying was it? Not. It wasn't as satisfying sad. as it would have been if the logical ending would have happened. Mm-hmm. But I still thought that it was brave of them and interesting to take it in that other direction, which I always respect that because 
the ending that I would have expected, which is the traditional sports hero ending, uh, would have been like, you feel good, happy, you leave the theater, and then you forget about it. But since they ended it in that way, I actually thought that it elevated it to a more mature level. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can believe that. It's just more for me the... Um, I, I just had a preference as to, to yeah, just kind oh, of how the, the ending would be, and I just couldn't yeah. get off of that. And I, I'm not to say that I hated it. It was just so jarring, and and once it was kind of in, in play, the the ending was in play, I uh, was yeah. like, eh, this, this, uh, I, I know where it's going past here. So yeah. uh, overall, I would say for everybody who's listened all the way through here, um, my overall thoughts would be, uh, nice film, just good film. Yeah, fun. Uh, really good character development for an animated film, uh, especially in the main cast, the top. Let's go th- two, two top mm-hmm. two uh, characters have a really mm-hmm. strong character development. Good arc for both of them, yeah. And uh, a lot of nostalgia. If if you really enjoyed the first, it one, hits you, know, you in the feels more than you would expect. Yes. Like I was teared up when they're talking about Doc. I was like, I'm, I'm not even a Cars fan, and I was crying. I was like, oh. Which, for so those sad. of you who don't know and are listening and are planning on going, uh, Paul Newman died in 2008, so mm-hmm. obviously they couldn't bring him back. But they did uh, a reasonable, uh, reasonably good job talking yeah. about that issue mm-hmm. and, and how they finalized that situation. Yeah. Um, story is pretty straightforward for me outside of the ending, and even then it was pretty straightforward if you, if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, so just a blessed story for me, uh, where it really shines is the character development and the animation as most Pixar films are. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and even I, 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 I feel that really bad that we neglected this, but the, the short before the film. Oh yes. was fantastic. The, the Pixar short as usual was better. Well, actually no, not as usual. The Pixar short was better than the movie. It's a silent short too. No, no dialogue, but it was, it was really cute. I liked it. Yes. Very enjoyable. And Totally set you up for has a complete emotional arc within and of itself. Yeah, and makes sense. I I loved yeah. everything that they did with it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, your overall thoughts, Gary? Yeah, it's pretty by the numbers plot. Uh, the second act had a lot of development, but it was kind of boring. I thought in the second act, um, I thought it started well. I thought it ended great. I personally, you know, different from Phil here. Um, no, I mean, I, I always find myself comparing it to the other Pixar films. I think that as an animated movie, just in terms of all animated movies in general, it's a good one. Oh, yeah. But then you see, like, the creativity. Like, Compared to Fred uh, the Polar Bear yeah. or whatever that film was that yeah, just got released last Norm year. Norm of the North. Norm yeah. of the North, yes. It's fantastic. You, you, um, you compare it to, like, you know, the, the creative... Um, variety and all the other Pixar films you're like eh but it was still a, I I could totally get behind lightning in this movie a lot more th- than I did in Cars 2 I thought it was a nice way to p- possibly end the franchise um, so I think that adults and kids would have at least a good time watching it alright so you know? your your Gary uh, percentage given to the film you ready for this I'm out of 100 I'm gonna give it a solid wow I can't believe we're doing this Sixty-eight. Wow. That see you to me. You alluded to the fact that it would be a little higher. Why not? Why not? I, well, I I'd probably give the original cars a seventy-five. Okay. And this one not as good, and I was still kind of bored at parts of it, and it was kind of you know like you said bland, and so I think sixty-eight is 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 between decent and good. So okay. That's where I would put it. Right behind you, uh, 67. 67. So, well, no, I, I... Why are we one point different? Yeah, I know. Uh, and I have it written down, as you uh, may may or may have not noticed. I, I just saw the 6, so I don't know if it was going to be 16 or 60-something. There you go. So, just for uh, proof of my of my ratings, I, I have it on 67. Uh, graphics alone just bring it to a 50. The, yeah. The, the, way, the way that they can make water look that realistic... Is just astounding. In a movie where why does this exist? Yeah, it's it's astounding. So the graphics alone bring it to a fifty. The story is just blah. Yeah. And uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, the character development, while strong, is uh, is a story that I feel I've seen before in, in Rocky. Uh, so it, it, it's good, but it's not anywhere towards uh, 
the best of the Pixar films, and really that's who they're fighting against now. They're in a league of their own, so yeah. So congrats on being the top dog. Now, yeah. Now prove it. <laughs> you are the warriors of animation. Yes. So uh, after this next Give Me Five section, we'll talk about the movie that we are going to watch next week. Boom. But in the meantime, we have a Give Me Five session that I am entirely excited I, about. Yeah, I'm usually dreading it, but I'm excited right now. All right. Stay tuned. Red Ribbon Realty Group at HomeSmart is a full-service real estate team of Phoenix natives with over 15 years of experience in the industry. When you work with them, you have two full-time realtors representing your best interests throughout your entire transaction, whether you are selling, buying, or renting. They also believe in supporting their community. Use code word chopped greens and Red Ribbon Realty Group will donate 15% of their net commission from your transaction to the nonprofit charity of your choice. Visit their website at www.redribbongroup.com and find them on Facebook. You can also email them at info at redribbongroup.com or call them at 602-888-6638. Red Ribbon Realty Group. Trust. Commitment. Home. You know what I also watched last night was Rush Hour 2. Oh my gosh. That was an awfully, that, that, awful um, good movie. Is it, not is not that, awfully good, but awful... But it was good by how awful it was. Is that Eddie Murphy and Jackie Chan? No, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker and Jackie yes, Chan. Yes. Man, you know what? I forgot how bad that was, but it was so good when I was a kid. You know what films I love out. that are terrible that are kind of like that are, are the Shanghai Nights movies. Oh, yeah. It's Jackie Owen Chan. I mean, just... I love he Jackie. He got a, a Lifetime Oscar this past year. Yeah. And he totally deserves it. Oh, yeah. He said, and we and even watched you, the bloopers. You, we haven't even, like, had, touched the tip of the iceberg as Americans. You need to go and like watch all of his awesome old uh, like Asian action movies. They are fantastic. And he does his own stunts. I yeah, mean, just, just an amazing actor. Yeah, as as an action. Just action an amazing actor. creator. There's this great video on YouTube called uh, "How Jack How Jackie Chan Does Action Comedy," and it just it really analyzes like how much of a perfectionist he is. And, and he's how much just a genuine, is. or seemingly from everywhere I've I've seen. Just a genuinely nice guy. Every every account I've ever read. Says maybe that he's a maybe he wants guy. to sponsor the podcast now. Maybe. Shout out to Jackie Chan, Chopped Greens, Phoenix, Arizona. Champed Greens. I can't <laughs> I can't Champed think. Greens. Champed Greens. All right. Uh, since it is. How about Jackie's Greens? We'll just Jackie's, call it Jackie's Jack, Greens. That sounds inappropriate. Uh, you know what? We're not going to call it Jackie's ja- Greens. Chopped Jackie's. Chopped Chans. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, Gary, uh, would you like to go first or second this week? You know what? I will steal your thunder and I'll just go first. Fantastic. Because you offered it to me and I took it. Take it. And as I usually do, I, I want to relate my first question to the movie we watched. So this week, I have a great round of Pixar trivia. Oh, fantastic. It's like the Pixar Uber facts. So I, I have three. Three Pixar questions and each of them consists of three Pixar facts. Uh-huh. Two of them are true, one of them is false. This is gonna be good. I don't know how good you're gonna do because you gotta sniff out the false one. I'm good. You ready for this? <laughs> He's got his Pixar senses tingling. Number one, part one. Disney almost shut down production on Toy Story because they thought that Woody was too much of a sarcastic jerk. Okay. And quote, like in their own words, sarcastic jerk. Two, Toy Story 2 was originally supposed to be a direct to DVD sequel. Okay. Three, Shaquille O'Neal was actually supposed to be a supporting character in Toy Story, but he couldn't negotiate a deal with Disney. Uh, first one, I believe, because you over-enunciated it and quoted it. Uh, second one is actually believable, because I thought I thought when it first came out, I thought it was uh, supposed to be a direct-to-DVD, and then they released it in theaters. I believe I remember that. So I'm going to go with Shaq, because I, I think you, uh, you've been drinking the NBA juice. Ooh, very good analysis. Shaquille O'Neal had nothing to do with Toy Story. Excellent. I made that one up. Excellent. You know what? Yeah, made me. Uh. I got Gary. I got Gary on the mind. Let's, Let's see go. here. All right, number two. Pixar has two of the top three highest selling DVD releases of all time, with Toy Story 3 and up having sold over 60 million copies each. Okay. Number two. Cars is Pixar's most profitable film franchise, having generated over $10 billion in revenue for Disney, okay. with merchandising and all that stuff. Number three, Up is the second animated movie ever to be nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture, the first being Beauty and the Beast. Oh, um, darn, I thought it was, 
Oh, wow. Okay, so that first one is totally believable. I'm trying to think of up. I mean, I... Say the up, up fact again one more time. Up is the second animated movie ever to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. The first being Beauty and the Beast. It wasn't nominated. It was nominated for Best Picture of, a, of an animation, but I don't know what litigation. I'll, I'll, go with, I'll go with that one just because if I got it wrong on linguistics, all right. You are wrong! Ah. Up was actually nominated for the Academy Award for... For both, for Best Animated, which it won, and mm-hmm. Best Picture Picture, which it did not win, but it was nominated, which is a really big deal. Huh. The was one it that, one of the nominees, like, on Oscar night? One of, the, like, the top five or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wow. it was actually nominated for that award, which is crazy, right? The one that was false was the Pixar has two of the top three selling DVDs of all time. Oh, okay. That one is not, not real. You ready for number three? I'm ready. I think I, I think he's looking it up. I think he's uh, Pixar fact checking me right now. But don't fact check the fact master, man. All right, sounds good. So number three, uh-huh. Reese Witherspoon was originally cast as Merida, Merida in Brave. Okay. Number two, Brother Bear is the only Pixar movie not to be nominated for at least one Oscar, as in like an animated sound mixing visual. Number three. Uh, Ratatouille was originally supposed to be coupled with a line of custom wine, but Pixar thought that it was going to encourage uh, underage drinking, so they pulled the the wine tie-in with Ratatouille. Okay. Go for it. It's that last one, because you did not even look at your phone the entire time you said the fact, the quote-unquote fact. I call you out on Ratatouille, sir. You call me on the Ratatouille wine? Yes. You sure? I'm dead sure. Buzzing it in? Buzzing it in. Because that is actually true! What? Ratatouille was supposed to have Italian wine. Uh, that makes sense. The one that was false was the Brother Bear, because Brother Bear is not even Pixar. It's not even Disney. No, it is Disney, but it's not Disney Pixar. It's not Disney Pixar. Yes. I, I, that one sounded fishy to me, too, but it was the it was the motion of the of the no-look pass that really got me. Man, you see, Phil's analyzed. He, he's an overanalyzer. Uh, kind of analyzer. So what did I go there? One for two? One for three. Okay, well, that's not bad, though. 33%. You've gone one for five before. Hey, well, you don't gotta bring that, that that's up. Good. That's ad hominem, man. We don't gotta talk about right, that. Alright, fantastic. Alright, Gary, even though Cholula, you're familiar with what you Love is. Cholula. Okay. Even though uh, Cholula founder Camilla Harrison is allegedly featured on The Bottle, Bob Saget of Full House fame couldn't help but jokingly notice the similarities between himself and the hot sauce company's matriarch. The similarities are remarkable. Bob and if you're Saget? Listening... Yeah, yeah, go ahead and look it up. Um, and if you're listening, go ahead and check out the similarities Bob on the side. Bob Saget on the Cholula On a side-by-side bottle. picture when you get the chance. It is remarkable how close they look in similarity. Uh, and it's totally trending on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, so, Gary, uh, I ask you, in the realm of our movie podcast, uh, which lookalike actor would you cast to play the part of one Gary Boucher if you were forced to go with just similarities physically. So, physically, okay. So I don't care if they act, if they can truly portray the soul of yeah. Gary. I just need to say, like, oh, you know what, you look like it Kristen like Stewart. Him. Go ahead. People tell me all the time, and I actually, I swear, I... The second one I'm going to tell you, I have heard at least a dozen times, especially since this person has become famous. The first one I hear from time to time. First one is Robert Pattinson. People are like, you look like Robert Pattinson, especially when my hair gets long and it's kind of foofy. Uh, number two is Miles Teller. He and I look very, Miles very Teller. similar. I hear Miles Teller all the time. People come to me and be like, you look just like the actor from Whiplash. And I'm like, huh, okay, I've heard that more times than I should have, so they better start looking. And you know what? Bob Sackett <laughs> totally looks like yeah, dude. The, the, the Cholula girl. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, if you guys want to look at Miles Teller, he looks pretty similar to me. We have similar faces and such. Yeah. And similar voices, too. We both have boyish man voices. So. Boyish man voices. Yes. Excellent. 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 Are you, are you rushing or are you fading? Oh are you God. rushing or are you fading? Dragon. Flash. Have, okay, w- do you have one for you? Because I'm... Rushing or dragging? Oh, uh, no, I didn't have one for me. I was thinking maybe, like, I don't... I've, nobody ever, ever tells me I look like anybody, which is good. You, you have, like, this person. amazing olive skin. Um, you... Just, Maddie, turn off the head and the podcast now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just looking at you, and I'm like... No, I who, can tell. Who looks like you? Uh, I get Megalot from Hercules. Just kidding. <laughs> 
Oh man, I'm gonna have to think about this. I'm gonna come right. back with an answer for you. All right, thank you, thank you. I was thinking maybe Johnny Depp or something, but he's kind of old. old. He's too old for you. But then again, he plays everybody, and so, anyways, sure. uh, your turn, Gary. Alrighty, so let's see here. There was are a, you a uh, <laughs> are you rushing or are you dragging? Not my, not quite my tempo. Not um, my, my tempo. So a French fitness blogger who is pretty famous on Instagram was tragically killed by an exploding whipped cream canister. I don't know if you saw this. The, those rechargeable whipped cream canisters um, that, that you can buy for your home if you're a baker like or really actually... Whipped. Correct, but you have ones that, that you can make cream and take a little CO2 cartridge and charge it by twisting it and putting oh. the CO2 into it. Okay. Um, it exploded and hit her in the larynx and she died because it burst through her chest. Ooh. Yeah, um, we actually have them at my work at Starbucks. We make at least 80 a day, and I'm actually terrified now because I handle those things all the time. It, it malfunctioned, exploded. Crazy way to die. She was, she was, uh, you know, she was making money, doing modeling stuff, and it's really sad. So on that note, uh, what is the weirdest way that you can think of to perish? Oh, that's a pretty crazy way to go out. That is a pretty crazy way to go out. I think if I had to. To put a, a thing to it, like how I want to go out, or just in general, like the weirdest way I could imagine a person. The weirdest way you can imagine someone dying. I always thought it would be weird to like choke on a potato. That'd be so sad. Yeah, like, so, so hilarious. Like, I know somebody like has a. Were they eating potato. a whole potato? No, I'd imagine somebody have a potato bazooka gun and just fire that thing in the air, and then it just comes. It down. just comes down, and someone like looks up as Somebody's, they're like, drinking like a Dasani, and then it just like forces oh. everything down. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna decide so And again, I think the the worst realistic death that has ever been recorded that people actually cared about was Elvis dying on the can. Yeah. That's probably the worst way to go out. Yes, I, I thought you were referencing for a second um, Big Fish. Because the, oh. the guy sees himself dying on the can. Oh. Have you seen that movie? Actually, I do. I do remember that one. Now, uh, that fish I... told my wedding, right? It's a great film, yes. Um, excellent question. So. Gary, when the Iska Academy in Devon opened on Thursday morning, an estimated 30 boys arrived for lessons, heads held high, in fetching tartan-patterned skirts. The hottest June days since 1976 had led to a bare-legged revolution at the secondary school in Exeter. As the temperatures rose earlier this week, the teenage boys had asked their teachers if they could swap their long trousers for shorts. They were told no, shorts weren't permitted under the school's uniform policy. When they protested that the girls were allowed bare legs, the school, no doubt joking, said the boys were free to wear skirts if, or two if they chose. So on Wednesday, a handful of bra- a handful braved the giggles and did so. <laughs> the scale nice. of the rebellion increased on Thursday when at least 30 boys opted for the attire. Gary, whose side are you on in the battle of the shorts, and have you ever had to wear a dress code? Yeah, uh, was, uh, sorry, you're asking me if if I like shorts. No, I'm saying, do you believe that they should be allowed to wear shorts or no? Oh, um, well, I think that the school should see how long they can keep this thing going and see if all the boys will wear skirts. That's pretty awesome. Um, I've jokingly worn a skirt before. Very comfortable. Very breezy. Very airy. Very nice. I'm not used to it. And a nice have I, they ever had to have a dress code? Um, I've had, I grew up, we both went to Challenge Charter School. Yes. And then on my old work, Sardella's, not only, it's, oh, I, was, yeah. I was a pizza driver, so like you'd think I could just wear greasy clothes, but they were like really big on like black pants, a belt, nice shoes, and I had to be clean shaven. It was really lame, because I just wanted to be a lazy college kid, but I had to follow a dress code. Wow. Yeah. Go you, Sardella's. Yeah, Go right. you. All right. But um, honestly, though, like hats off to those boys. That's pretty hilarious. Yes, yes. The pictures are fun. Another uh, crazy thing in the news about uh, death, <laughs> um, a man in, 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 in Illinois um, followed his estranged wife. He and his wife were living apart, virtually divorced, and his wife got with another man. The, uh, her, her ex-husband got really jealous and started following her. She saw her get into another man's car, and he followed them, chased them down the road, purposely crashed into them, and when they got out to run away, he chased them down. This is real. This just happened two days ago. He chased them down with a chainsaw, and the other guy tripped, and this guy almost cut off his arm with a chainsaw. It was hanging by a tendon and a thread of skin, and now the man is in jail and um, so. for, for attempted murder. Yeah. 
But you know what? That was all done in the name of love. So, you, Phil, I gotta ask you, what's the craziest thing you've ever done in the name of love? In the name of love. Uh, well, the craziest thing I've done in the name of love is probably recently. We, uh, we got a dog. Yes. Never saw myself as a dog person. I'm allergic to dogs. I'm allergic to yeah, cats as too. well, yeah. more so. But, um, yeah, I got a dog because she wanted a dog. And you're just brave in the... I'm, I, it's not even a dog type that I wanted. I, I love corgis. Mm-hmm. So if I was going to get a dog, I wanted it to be a corgi. We found, we compromised somewhere in the middle. It's a, it's a cute dog. It's Pomeranian, It's right? a Pomeranian Chihuahua mix. So that's, it's small. That's a cute little thing. And it, uh, it has little poops, so I don't mind that. Yeah. So that, that's kind of where, uh, that's the craziest thing because I never saw myself as uh, getting a dog. Yeah, you know what? I have a, a pug. And I, we got it because Maddie likes pugs. And I'm allergic to them too, but she's a sweetheart. Oh. Yeah. You don't find them pugly? I find them extremely pugly, but uh, that's why I love them. But that's why you love them. There is that, that um, mind thought of love, something is being so ugly. That is cute. That cute. I mean, she is hideous. Yeah. She is just a sight to behold. Like I, I, I can attest to is, that. She is from the depths of hell, but I love her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, my next one. Gary, I've got a fever. And the only prescription for more it cowbell. is more Uberfast. Oh, God, Phil, no, oh. no, I don't want to do it. No, don't make me do it. Well, the usual, I've got three facts for you, Gary. One of them is false, and I want you to tell me which is the false fact. How many? You got five of these? Five. Ah, oh, bring it out. Come Are on. Are you ready? I'm going to get at least three out of five this week. I'm well, guaranteed. Guarantee he's marking his, his clock. If Are I don't ready? get at least three out of five. Can I smack you? Uh, yes. Woo! I'll get at least three out that'll, of five. That'll be, yeah, okay, here we go. All right, first one. Sigmund Freud had a fear of ferns. Fact number two. Michael Jackson ate at least three Twinkies a day. Fact number three. Napoleon Bonaparte would make his servants wear his boots to break them in before he wore them. Which fact is the fake one? Oh, God, I hate this. Sigmund Freud had a fear of ferns. Michael Jackson ate at least three Twinkies a day. Napoleon made his servants wear his boots to break them in before he wore them. You know what? Sigmund Freud was crazy smart and weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, Napoleon was a total a-hole, so I, he would totally do that. And Michael Jackson was just a weirdo, so he would totally do that. So I'm just going to have to close my eyes. Do it, do it. Reach out to the gods. Mind dirt. That Sigmund Freud one is false. Well, you got to get uh, three more out of the next four because you are wrong, which, sir. What? Which one's I false? I made up to Michael Jackson and the Twinkie. I thought, I was like, is that it? Then I was like, no, of course Michael Jackson did that. He was such a weirdo. That is so weird, right? It's just so random. All right, next one. Winnie the Pooh was originally named Bumbly Bear. Fact number two, the Hollywood sign originally said Hollywood Land. All one word. Uh, fact number three, a live reindeer was brought to the studio so that frozen animators could be inspired. Which fact is it? Which one is the fake fact? Look at you right? asking a frozen fact. Ah, all right. So the first one. Give it to me one more time. Uh, Winnie the Pooh was originally Bumble named Bear. Bumbly Bear. Bumbly Bear. Okay. I can Number see two. That. The original Hollywood sign said Hollywood Bumble Land. Bear. Last one. A live reindeer was brought into the Frozen Studio so that animators could be inspired. Oh God. Um. I won't even look at you. I'm not going to give you a darn thing of information. Phil, look me in the eye. Right I am now. not going to look do me it. in the eye, son. I am. Come on, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. I'm the old man, and you know what? Oh I think that the answer for this one is Hollywood Land. Oh, so that's the that's the that's true the one? false one. No, that's false, the false one. Hollywood Land's the false one. Yes. Ooh, you need to go on a streak, buddy. I made a bumbly oh. bear. You made a bumbly bear? Oh, come on. I should have known, because you and your little Winnie the Pooh. Cute little phrases. Ah. Winnie the Pooh. So I got to go three for three. Yes, or else you will hear a slap on the podcast. Oh, God. All right, next one. Ostrich legs are considered a delicacy in Australia. Number two, Hitler once stated, quote, if it is not the fashion now, it will be because I wear it. End quote, talking about his mustache. Fact number three, most of the voice actors for the Peanuts gang in Charlie Brown were random kids from the director's neighborhood. One more time, ostrich legs are considered a delicacy in Australia. Hitler once stated, if it is not the fashion now, it will be because I wear it, talking about his mustache. And uh, fact number three, most of the voice actors for the Peanuts gang in Charlie Brown were random kids from the director's neighborhood. 
Ostrich legs. That's your true one. False one. That's your false one? Yes. Okay, he's on the board. Oh, God. <laughs> he's on the board. Woo, to God, get two more in a row. Two all right, all right, all right. No, I'm not dead yet. Not dead yet. You still got a game five. Here we go. The original disco ball was actually a weapon used in World War I to daze and confuse the enemy snipers. Uh, fact number two, men who had good relationships with their moms as children end up making $87,000 more per year than men with mothers who were uncaring. And fact number three, Sir Isaac Newton dropped out of school at an early age to help out with the family farm. Number two is false. The men who had a good relationship with their mom as children, that's the false one. $80,000? No way. Walk Disco up. balls didn't, uh, didn't say I'm fake at all. They used it in World War I. Oh, he is okay. getting slapped. No! Oh. Uh, we'll do that Dang again. It. That'll close us out. That'll be like the, instead of the bye. Right, you well, can say bye and I'll slap you. All right, all right. All right. But just for, for kicks and giggles. Last one. Uh, banana peels can drastically diminish the effects of pink eye. Fact number two. People who love grilled cheese sandwiches tend to have more sex than those who don't. In fact, number three, Atlanta once made it illegal to tie a giraffe to a telephone pole. What was the first one? Again? First one, banana peels can drastically diminish the effects of pink eye. And the last one was the giraffe, and uh, the second one was what? People who love grilled cheese sandwiches tend to have more sex than those who don't. Yeah, oh, I can attest to that. All right, uh, number three. Number three? <laughs> yes. Man, you went one for four! What was the first the, one? Uh, the or first banana one. peels can drastically diminish the effects of pink eye. I hate my life. I hate my uh, life. Wow. That was I was rough. really, I, I pulled a Luke right there. Oh, I was really, really, You really, were really, really wrong. Really confident. Oh. Uh, your turn, Gary. All right, well, you know what? Here's a question. Here's one that you'll like to oh. answer. I love it. So, recently there's been a lot of trade talk. NBA trade talk, NBA uh -huh. draft talk, and all this stuff. And I, I can't help but feeling like... Like, small market teams have, like, next to no chance. Unless you're a team with a ton of money, or a team, you know, in a big city with name recognition, or a team that's already winning. Like, I feel like... I, I have this dreaded feeling that teams like... Uh, you know, Memphis... Even Phoenix is kind of a small market team. It's it's never been, like, like in L.A., in New York, uh, or Chicago. In, it's in the upper tier, but it's around in the middle. Yeah. I mean, you know, Sacramento, New Orleans, places like that. They're uh -huh. just never going to be there, like, at this point. So, I got to ask you, do you think that the playing field has changed for small market teams? Like, how, how do they compete now? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, it, it, it depends on your owner, first and foremost. True. Uh, but after that, it's just a... A random convulsion of talent. Uh, look at the Golden State Warriors. Five years ago, even. Five years ago, they were nothing. They were below nothing. The Cavs were nothing, too. The Cavs were nothing, too. Way back uh, well, five years ago, they had LeBron, right? Five years no, five, no. Six, seven years Five ago. years ago was their first year without LeBron. Okay. So, they were awful and doomed to be awful without LeBron. But at least they had LeBron. Yeah. I think fortuitous events happen to where new teams take hold. I mean, look at Milwaukee. Now they have... Uh, Chris Milton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Can you say yeah. his name? Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh, nice. Okay. No, I don't uh, get I can't, I can't spell it, but I know how to say it. Antetokounmpo. Anyways, Antetokounmpo. And uh, logic would say that he's the next big thing. I think that he's realistically the next player to blossom. Well, what happens when, when Milwaukee can't give him the contract that LA or New York can? Oh, no, they can't. They just, I mean, just can't give him the additional things. But if, if you're a good and well-run franchise, you get a Jabari Parker, you get a Chris Milton, you get all these ascending talents around him so that way they mold together and they grow together. And they want to stay together. Golden State Warriors. Yeah. And then you hopefully get a Kevin Durant where that winning culture is created. Uh, yeah. I, I've never believed that middle teams or lower teams are built to... Uh, fail or be doomed. I mean, we look at Houston in the MLB, and they have the Houston best... Houston is a big is, franchise, right? Uh, no, I mean, well, the before Astros. this year, they have, they have been, uh, like, just god-awful. They've been the joke of the, of the yeah, town. Yeah. Now they're, I believe, far and above beyond the way of, of standings and everybody. They have more wins than anybody else, so... Um, really, I just think it's, uh, it's how good's management. Chase good management in life. And, uh, whoever, whoever has yeah. that is set. What? 
Uh, Gary, it is the NBA draft. I have one as well. The one time of the year where the most convulsion of trade moves in any league actually happens. That's tonight, right? That's tonight. Oh, it's kidding. I, I have a live update of NBA trade rumors on my phone. I'm like, oh. Fantastic. So simply put, I ask you, Gary Boucher, will there be any major trade moves happening tonight? So more so than just picks, per se, or, or yeah. I guess big time picks. Uh, and if so, predict which will be the biggest in your humble opinion. So, so will there be? First, in my not so humble opinion, um, Cleveland will not get George or Jimmy Butler. Wow. Um, they don't, and nobody. It's funny because Kevin Love is a good player, but he's a, a great player, but nobody wants him because. And I mean, I think that George and Butler are better than him both. Um, and Cleveland doesn't have enough to offer, whereas LA and maybe Boston do. Um, I think that actually uh, one of these two trades will happen. Paul George to L.A. or LaMarcus Aldridge to Phoenix. I've been uh, apparently... I do know that when he was a free agent, he was looking at He really, really looked at Phoenix. Phoenix has a lot of bargaining room as far as picks and players. Young talent. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that either he's going to go to Phoenix, which is cool for me. I think he's a great fit. I like him. Um... Or Paul George goes to L.A., maybe Jimmy Butler to Boston, but nothing for Cleveland, I don't think. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens in the next few hours, though. Right? I do think Paul George is getting to Cleveland only because... You think he'll, you think he'll get there? I, I just think if you're Indiana, for one, the, there are rumors that... I mean, Indiana, Indiana has to trade him or else he said like he's going to leave next year. So right, right. So I trade him today. Right for their most for their most, the most they give because after this then free agency begins or, or uh, yeah free agency begins and then everybody's cap room is set yeah uh, but more so than that I think if you're Indiana realistically Boston or LA can give you more but that doesn't mean that they are realistically going to give you more uh, yeah. I don't think LA or Boston will give up their top five picks. Yeah. Everything else is available, but outside of that, and um, imagine Lonzo Ball going to Indiana. That would just be <laughs> awful for everybody. But I, if you're Indiana, I think there's nothing better than you can get than Kevin Love. I know it's not the cream of the crop per se, but he offers. He, I, I think he's better than the 28th pick overall, the 27th pick overall that LA yeah. could offer you. Uh, I think he's better than whatever else Boston is willing to give you because they're not going to give you a, a, a quality draft pick. It's just no secret that I want Cleveland to win this year and next year. I mean, they've lost this year, but I mean. I would like I'm like George go to Cleveland win you're not gonna win in LA go to Cleveland at least for a few years so that's that's kind of my uh, that's my feeling nice. I don't know if it'll happen tonight but I think it'll happen um, okay, okay your turn Gary you know I, I hope that'll happen but I don't know let's see he uh, this is number five wow number five so really big news for me and all those Star Wars fans out there Han Solo the, the Han Solo standalone movie just parted ways with its two directors, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who have previously done, if you don't know them, the Lego movie and the two 21 Jump Street movies. They're like fun, definitely comedy directors. Disney felt that they, they were taking it in too much of a different direction, so they parted ways. And they just hired on Ron Howard to finish oh, the really? I didn't, I didn't yeah. see that they had Ron Howard's either. safe choice, good director. You know. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So I have to ask you, what is a movie past or present ever that could have benefited from a different director the most uh, yeah really I think a, it's hard uh, just because you can't really think of great films um, yeah anything Martin Scorsese done has done is just off limits he's, he's a fantastic director yeah and I saw you take a breath there. You were about to really I know, disagree I, with me. I, like, I was like, wait, are you going to say anything he's done is terrible? I was like, what are you about to do right now? No, 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 no. Um, Steven Spielberg is just so technically sound. I, yeah. I can't do anything he's done. Uh, I think, you know what? I'll, I think just for fun, I was yeah. going to go something with Adam Sandler, but I'll, I'll go better with Pirates of the Caribbean, this last one. Okay. I think with a different director. I, I, I think it was service. It was just middle of the pack. Completely yeah. Completely middle of the pack. And with a different director, it, it could have been had a more serious effect to it. And it could have been done a little bit better. You know what I think? Mm. If the Star Wars prequels were not directed by George Lucas. He, so he creates a story, but it's directed by somebody yeah, else? Yeah, he, and he's like, you know, a, a creative leader, but it's directed because they, they were just like, ugh. You know, I think that they could have been really good movies if he wouldn't have directed them. 
And you know what? Each film, I've I've come to maybe one one time we'll do a, a Star Wars in general. In Star general, Wars just, a, just a thought, just expound expansion of thought, but. I didn't think that they were as bad as everybody else did, but... It, it, they I, haven't I aged terribly, why. but I, they could have been way better. Yeah, you know? I, I understand why. But anyways, um, good, good question. Uh, Gary, I was flipping through the available movies on my TV last night, and I found Ratatouille. I forgot Ratatouille. Just how, Ratatouille. I forgot how much, just how much I love that movie, and how incredible the culmination of visuals and soundtrack fully came together to consistently whet my appetite every time I see that movie. Mm -hmm. Every time I watch it, I just get hungry. Yes. Uh, It is easily my favorite underrated Pixar film. With that, in addition to us watching Cars 3 this weekend, I thought it appropriate to make a game out of Pixar films. So, I've got the top six highest grossing Pixar films of all time. Okay. Three Strikes You're Out, and again, this is singular films. So, sequel films are considered standalone films in this list. So, that's your first... Him. So, so, so Toy Story Two. Is Mulan Two film. would be it wouldn't be the entire Mulan franchise. Yeah. It would just be Mulan and, then Mulan and Mulan Two, each as their own. Do I have to order them? Uh, no, just just say if oh, oh, just saying. Yeah. All right. Uh, Toy Story Three. Absolutely, number one with uh, one like a the, billion dollars. Yeah, right? it's the only one to reach a billion dollars, uh, one billion and uh, sixty-three point two million. Wow. Uh, cars. Uh, that's your first strike. Really, no, cars didn't even not, top six? They make the top six. Okay, so, and I have three strikes. Mm-hmm. Right, two, um, up. Absolutely, number five with 731.3 million. So you've got one in five right now. So I'm, I'm also, I'm not looking at a list of Pixar movies. I'm just going off the top of my head. Yeah, I know, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, Finding Nemo. Absolutely, number two, 895.6 million and standing at number two. Okay. So you've got one, two, and five. And then I have three more. And you have two more strikes. Uh, Finding Dory. No, has not made it yet. You also got to wow. think of uh, of stuff that's already been to DVD, uh, just to help because it's the highest grossing, so it, it takes into account everything. Okay. Uh, Toy Story, the first one. Uh, no, that's your final strike. All what? Right. Oh. Let, me, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Number three. Think of emotions. Oh, Inside Out. Yeah. Oh, Eight hundred fifty-one point five million. Uh, number four, uh, this isn't the one with doors. Isn't the one with doors? What? Which Pixar film had doors? Had oh, doors. Monsters, Inc.? But this isn't the one with doors. Monsters University? Yeah, Monsters University wow, with 743.6 oh, million. See, I never, w- I haven't even seen that movie. It's it's serviceable. It's pretty good. I, I never would have guessed that. Serviceable, uh, I think, is my favorite Not Monsters, Inc. But no. Yeah, I, you like serviceable. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, number six... Superhero. Oh, The Incredibles. Yes. yes. Wow, okay. All right, so you got all of them. Uh, Pixar is a very expensive filmography. I always forget yeah. that all those movies are Pixar movies. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, too, if I just said, yeah, I said superheroes, and you could have easily mistaken it for Big Hero 6, because Marvel, Marvel stepped in on Big Hero 6, and... Yeah. But, yeah, they got a very expansive Pixar universe. Lots of money made for Disney. Yes. As always. All right, as we stand up, getting ready for the slap, let's uh, let's tell the where, good people. Where am I getting slapped? Let's Hold just on. go right over here. Let's all stand right next to you. But as no, we, I mean like like where my body am I getting oh, slapped? Oh, just on your face. Oh boy, I love face. We gotta do it right over the mic though. Yeah, I know, I know. But as we uh, as we do this, let's tell people what uh, what our next movie is gonna be. No, I'm gonna give you the honor because I did it last week. Okay, we are gonna. I I heavily protested the. Edition of Transformers. I will not go see it. I, I do not support this. I can't support this madness anymore. I, I'm I'm for good films, even if it happens to be a sequel. This has proven to neither be a good film yes. nor a good sequel. So yes. get out of here. We are not watching Transformers. Peer pressure will not make us go. We are gonna watch instead the big sick. You should go see it. It's gonna be good. Hopefully it is. Uh, Kumail, support indie movies. Support non, them. Non, non, ooh, Nani Johnny. He will find out how to pronounce Gianni. this by next week. Oh, Kamal Nanjiani, I think, and Zoe Kazan. Yes. Highlight this star-studded cast of indiness, and uh, we will we will watch it and give you our thoughts next week. And uh, as always, for Chopped Greens, I'm putting my face over the mic. I can't wait to get slapped. It has been. 
Gary Boucher. I'm Philip Amroy, and thank you so much for listening. Of course, watch YouTube for any of our older archived podcasts. Uh, stay tuned on SoundCloud for all current podcasts. The anticipation is killing me. Just As slap always, me. Gary. Bye. Oh, ow, that was painful. <laughs>